So you want to start a mushroom farm and you're thinking, holy bananas, this is going to be expensive. I know the feeling. So in this video, we're going to break down the return on investment for some of the pieces of equipment you will see mushroom farmers use. The goal of this video is to give you a bit more confidence when you're looking at spending, you know, five or $10,000 on a piece of equipment and to show you the tools I use to compare uh, how much time and money you spend on uh, doing a task beforehand and then how much uh, return on investment you're going to get. Let's say if you did spend $5,000 on equipment so you can do that task at a quicker pace. Mushroom farming can be quite labour intensive, so the goal of buying equipment is to get that labour cost right down uh, and replace it with one-off equipment costs. If you do want a copy of my mushroom farming return on investment asset calculator, big long-winded word, uh, you can get a copy from the uh, pinned comment or look in the description below. Um, but let's talk about assets on a mushroom farm. You see, everything uh, costs money and everything has an intrinsic value, all your assets do. For instance, this is simply just a rolling shelf. So this is a shelf on wheels and it can support like 200 kilos on there, right? Now, this has value in one way, is that it reduces the time you, I need to manually be carrying bags around the farm. So I can unload them out of the steriliser onto these, I can wheel them in the clean room, I can wheel them into incubation, and I can wheel them then straight into fruiting. Now, that cuts down a lot of time. That cuts down, over the course of a year, quite a significant amount of time. For, so for something like a rack, which I have to spend money on buying, it's reasonably easy to figure out the return on investment for an item like that. So if I throw up an image here of our shelf ROI, a lot of numbers here, I know, but you can see down the bottom, the return on the investment, 78%. So when we put in the shelf details that we have on the farm here, and we put another detail such as how long it used to take us to move bags, manually move bags around our farm. Every time we lift a bag and put it down, lift a bag and put it down, it takes time. And then we look at the cost of the shelving and how much time that saves, we can figure out our return on investment. So shelving's quite good, it's really in the green, it's at 78%. I think shelving is amazing. Um, rolling racking, I should say. Oh, I love a good rack. But if you've got rolling racking on your farm and you can move like hundreds of blocks really quickly, I can move like, and, and you know, in five minutes I can have 3,000 blocks moved to a different room in our farm. Um, it really does cut down a lot of time, especially if you're starting to get good throughput. Now some assets are slightly harder to quantify the value on. This is an external chili unit here. This is where all my mushrooms go after they've been harvested. They'll just get put on the inside in there. Um, you don't just want to go out and buy that straight away uh, thinking you're going to get the, the return on investment for that because if you can't sell enough mushrooms then you can't really justify buying an item like that. But an item like that is needed when you're growing enough mushrooms. You've got to keep them cold. So items like that are slightly harder. It's one of those farm asset items which I consider to be a mandatory. Um, you simply need it. And even if the return on investment, if the return on investment is low, but you can't do the task otherwise, you still have to buy it. So this guy down here is my uh, ribbon blender. This ribbon mixer helps me uh, manufacture our growing blocks quicker. Now I want to say the old office classic here, there's two schools of thought in this area. There's people who do dry bagging and there's people who do wet bagging. Uh, I do wet bagging, so a ribbon mixer, we then pour it into a big container and we manually put into sacks. Um, but we're looking at now buying more equipment so we, we, it goes straight out of this machine here into an auto bagger which uh, pumps um, or presses the substrate into our bags. Now buying these here speed up the time at which you can manufacture your blocks. And when you're making lots of blocks per week, these uh, the return on investment on these um, gets quite high quite quick. Um, I've got the figures here, which is a printout from my uh, calculator sheet. So this, um, this ribbon mixer here nets us a return on investment of approximately 59%, uh, percent, so 59% per year. It probably cost us on here about $5,000 to get from China. So $5,000 and it's needing us 59% of that back each year. So by year two, it's, uh, it's quite a profitable piece of equipment. I reckon for mushroom farming, you want it above, when you're just starting out, you want to hit return on investments above like 40%, right? You want to spend all your money on the items which give you the highest return the quickest. And it's really important to do that to help your farm grow. So how does this, how does this make us money? This uh, can simply, we can produce more bags 
per week by using this device. Um, if you were to manually bag a bag, so if we were to use one of these and I was to scoop in some wet, some dry into this, then add the water, uh, and then once it's hydrated, squeeze it down and put it into the container, it's going to take me about probably 30, 30 seconds per, per block if I'm going fast at it, right? So I've got the capacity of about 120 of, of these per hour, even that's going quite quick, um, to manufacture about 120 of these an hour. Now let's say we're manufacturing uh, 240 of those a week, that's two hours alone there where you are spending uh, manufacturing bags, right? And at the cost of about $30 an hour, it gets quite costly throughout the year. This machine here, when we mix it in here in the manual bag, we, we get about double the throughput. So we can do about 240. We uh, timed it at 220, but we were just doing a, a cruisy pace. If we go hard, we can do about 240 bags per hour um, by adding this. So it about doubles our throughput, which means you halve the amount of labour hours um, you're spending on doing that task on your farm each year. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, it's mushroom farming, it's all about labour, let's go to work, you know, let's work hard. No, it's not. Once you start a mushroom farm and you, it starts going well and you start having to pay people to do all these tasks, because I don't do that, I don't do the bagging myself anymore, right? Like, I'm running the farm here, we've got people who do the bag, my staff come in, great staff, they come in, they do the bagging for me, but I have to pay them per hour of work. Once you start paying people for, per hour of work, you realise that machinery really helps out. So this is another piece of machinery you have connected to the back of my tractor here. You'll see the column right here. And this is a pallet jack, and this connects to the linkages on the back of my tractor. Now with this uh, pallet, pallet forks here, you'd call them, uh, we can lift one ton um, pallets of wood pallets, pallets of pallets, off the back of a truck. But why do we need to lift one ton bags of substrate off the back of a truck with my lovely John Deere? Because if we buy our substrate by the ton like this here, we actually save about $200 per pallet, okay? So that machine back there, that pallet jack cost me $1,400, and we're saving, we're saving $200 per pallet. So easily within a year, that pays itself off. So that's got a very high return on investment. So it's absolutely worth buying that. We also bought another one, which you can just see in there, that red thing. Um, that helps us move, that's another 1400, so really we spent 2800 on this, um, just so we can buy those pallets in and save $200 per pallet. But the return on investment for that easily justified it. One thing you don't wanna do is get stuck into the trap of um, spending money on stuff you don't need, right? You've got to make everything. You got to, when you're building a mushroom farm, you've got to make your dollars go as far as possible. Uh, for example, of that is this is my. I sold my own private car. I had a real nice V8 Audi, and I sold it, and uh, that money went towards um, this wee van here for my business. This is a Volkswagen Caddy. This is twelve thousand dollars, and this is this is what I drive for work every day. Now you see people who start new companies, and they go out and they you know they tick up a fifty thousand dollar delivery vehicle. And they're paying monthly, monthly costs on that. Why? Why, when you're growing a business, that $50,000 vehicle doesn't enable you to increase your revenue, right? Your monthly revenue over and above what something like this would be able to do, right? Um, and this was a whole, a whole lot cheaper than a new vehicle. You could go cheaper than that, but there is a point where cheap runs you higher costs on on maintenance, on repairing, on breakdowns, and things like that. And then sometimes, like, vans in New Zealand aren't cheap in general. So this is what we got here. But don't get in the trap of thinking, you know, you, you need to go out and buy the biggest, most expensive thing um, because it's cool, or because it looks good, or because it gives your farm a certain image. Buy what generates you revenue. That's all it's about. Build a farm generate revenue, be successful. Now if you're like me and you've uh, started a mushroom farm or you're starting a mushroom farm um, and you want to spend all this money because everything's got this really high uh, return on investment, um, you do get held back a bit and mainly that's because you actually have to wait for the revenue to come in. So your revenue comes in, you, you pay for your cost of goods sold, you're left with your gross profit, then you paid for all your outgoings, um, your labour, your power, um, anything else that costs office expenses, then you're left with your net profit, and from your net profit that you then have to spend that on buying assets for the farm. 
Um, we're lucky our farm's doing really well here, so we're having more and more money each month which we can spend on assets like that. But it doesn't stop there. Um, we will continue to spend a lot of money on assets this year, and we will to continue to grow this farm um, as big as we can. So if you do want a copy of our farm asset calculator, I'll link in the description. Uh, there'll be a couple of videos to accompany it. Um, when you've got a mushroom farm, really start thinking about uh, return on investment for everything you spend on the farm, on all assets you spend. Again, you want to put the money where it works the best for you, especially in the early stages. It's very, very important.